is jQuery still relevant in 2018? The month is August 2018, and I'm going to answer that question in this video coming right up. jQuery 2018. Is it dead? Is it dead? Kaput? Is it something that's frivolous? Pertinent? Significant? Is it a waste of your time? Is it a waste of my time? Is it something that doesn't really matter? Is, is it going, going to be a waste of your time? Is it something that doesn't really matter? My name is James Stone, and I am a software developer with over six years of experience on the front end of web development. I am Zurb certified preferred. That is the highest level. And if you don't know what it is, it's like bootstrap, but way, way better. And I've been doing this YouTube channel for quite some time, and I've had over 300,000 views on videos just like this one. So I think you might be interested in what I have to say about jQuery today, August 2018. Who cares? Is it important? Let's get right into it. So jQuery, what is it good for? I think a couple of things. So for, first of all, it's pretty much the standard thing and way that you're going to interact with older web apps. So if you're just getting started, maybe you're thinking junior level, maybe they're going to throw some PHP at you or some sort of a little bit antiquated technology. It's not the coolest and the most fun to work with or the most efficient in terms of programming. But you got to do, got to do what you got to do, right? Sometimes it's PHP. Often you're going to be doing some jQuery stuff. So if that's the case, this is going to be super, super relevant for you. The other cases, I mentioned Zurb Foundation. It's a CSS framework, Bootstrap. I'm going to say WordPress, like older CMS systems, you know, Joomla, Drupal, anything older, right? Anything that you're going to be working with like that, or these CSS frameworks, kind of the standard way, they all come with a bunch of jQuery plugins. And so if you want to build and expand on that, jQuery, that's going to be the way you do it. And this is my own personal opinion, but a lot of what I've been doing over the past six years is building out design systems, building out coded style guides and what comes with that when you're doing a large revamp, a UX heavy change, you're doing a redesign, creating a coded prototype. And I almost always, always use jQuery to highlight and showcase what the interaction is going to be. And it's the fastest way to do it. It's easy and, and it's by far the best technology. Now you might expand that to like Angular or React if you're doing that, but it's always gonna be faster and easier to prototype in jQuery. So that all sounds good, but like, what can I do with it? What can I actually do with it? What does it actually do? What can I do with it? Let me tell you. The first thing you can do is very easily work with HTML elements using a standard CSS selector as a way to easily select those objects and interact with them. If you don't know what this means, watch the rest of the videos in this series and it's gonna make a lot more sense. The other thing that it's really good at is creating more complex interactive states. What do I mean by interactivity? Okay, in a simple sense, you should almost always try to use CSS first for pretty much anything. Why? Because it's gonna be more performant, it's gonna work better on browsers, it's overall gonna be a better experience. But what is the downfall? The downfall is this, the that's right, the click, right? If you have a, a mouse, right, and you're clicking, or if we have a tablet and it's a touch event, anytime, and in fact, if you look at Bootstrap or Zurb Foundation, anything that you click on and there's some sort of interactivity, now we're talking about navs, we're talking about drop downs, right? We're talking about tabs, accordions, anything that you click on and then it does something that is using JavaScript, right? So you need to use it, and it's gonna be way, way easier to create those interactions using jQuery than writing it in straight JavaScript. The other thing that it's really good for 
is creating a little bit more complex component. Now, I'm not talking about something crazy, but something where you might append some data into the HTML element and maybe have a bunch of different buttons that act a little bit differently or they go to a different place. Maybe going to a different place doesn't make sense, but they're in some way having some data that causes them to act a little bit differently. And if you're wondering what I mean exactly, if you've used data dash something like this in Bootstrap or Foundation and it did something different like in tabs or whatever, this is exactly what I mean. Data that changes the way the component works. And by component, I mean HTML elements that are kind of bound together in this amorphous idea of an object that it's its own thing, right? Like a tooltip or a nav or a button or a dropdown. And that is exactly what it's good at. The, the question is, is this, is, is this, is this, is learning jQuery going to be a waste of my time? By my mind, I mean you, you dear watcher of YouTube, everyone, like, am I wasting my time with jQuery? Everyone's like, don't do that. Learn React, Angular, Vue, JS, anything, right? I'm going to argue that it's not a waste of your time if you don't know the basics. But don't go crazy. You don't need to learn jQuery perfect, but you need to know the basics, right? Like if you're using stuff in Linux, probably you need to know VI just enough to edit something in case you get stuck. Same thing, just learn the basics. So the reason why I don't think this is a waste of time specifically is because the same things and the techniques that you learn with jQuery are going to be transferable to more modern JavaScript frameworks such as Angular, React, Vue, whatever comes out tomorrow, literally. It's going to be transferable because when it comes down to it in Angular, for the most part, everything's abstracted. You have templates. It's a little bit easier to work with. But when you start doing custom stuff, now we're talking about beyond the basics, like your boss is like, make this thing happen today. You're going to be working with the DOM directly, and it's going to be almost identical, especially in the case of Angular, in the way that you go and use a CSS style selector to bind events to HTML elements and do this type of thing. And so it's going to be very, very similar. And so the same techniques and ideas that you get basically creating JavaScript interactivity based on these CSS selectors that represent HTML, and then they do something, it's going to be exactly kind of the same process, just in a more Angular or React kind of way. And the way that we show that, right, is going to be usually with a CSS class. The other reason why I think it's worth spending a little bit of time just to learn the basics. Now, again, don't go crazy. Don't go get like a four-year degree in jQuery. Just learn the basics just enough to get started and get going with it is it is going to provide a more developer-friendly format for creating these types of things that I explained. Basic interactivity, basic interactive components, things that maybe need some data and kind of change as a component, working with PHP or WordPress or whatever those things are, right? Maybe you're working on some old school stuff and that's cool, but you got to do what you got to do, right? It's like not everyone gets to go and build like a, you know, SPA with React and it's going to be awesome. Like some people are in the trenches making everything still run, right? And so if you're in that case, it's going to be so good for you because it's going to be way more developer friendly. What do I mean by that? Languages like Python tend to be more developer friendly. Ruby's like the holy grail in terms of that reads more like English. Now, I don't say that it's that, but it's going to be much more concise and much faster to get started to build interactions and do these types of things with jQuery than it is going to be with JavaScript alone. So it's going to save you time, be lazy, write less code, get it done faster, just ship it, jQuery. So here we are, 2018, August is the month, and I would argue that it's still relevant today, right? In some of those cases, I think it's going to be a very useful thing for you to know the basics of jQuery. And is it still relevant? Yes. Do I still use it in my work? Yes. Do I still use jQuery first when I'm creating a clickable prototype and explaining how something is working on a website? Yes. 
It is definitely my go-to tool. But that begs the question, what are the basics? What do you need to learn? Let me tell you. CSS selectors. How to handle click and update events. How to update the CSS classes, basically, when there's some sort of event that happens. Adding hard-coded data, that's a little bit more advanced, but still something you should know how to do. And the one thing that you're going to need to know is just some basic JavaScript. Now, you might go, oh, I don't know. I don't know JavaScript, right? Or maybe you don't feel confident. Look, you can figure it out as you go. You'll be able to follow along in these tutorials. And if you don't feel comfortable, just search on YouTube for a basic JavaScript tutorial, and then you should be ready to go. So I hope that you will join me in the following videos learning how to use basic jQuery, real world style, not wasting your time, not wasting my time. Let's get to it. I hope to see you in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe using the link below. And if you'd like to watch the next video in the series, you should find that. I'm not sure which side I'm redoing my branding, but maybe it's over here and I'll spin the video around. But yes, watch the next video. It's going to be awesome. It's going to save your life.